Hi, welcome to the American Rambler with your host, Paul Grafton. Okay, for number 22 on our series of movies that have predicted or gave us a glimpse of our future, this one is going to be uh, Taxi Driver. Uh, this is looking at modern male alienation and as well as the empathy gap. Taxi Driver paints a disturbing portrait of Travis Bickle. He is a Vietnam veteran struggling with insomnia, isolation, and descent into violent ideation. Well, I don't think the violent ideation is there. It's more or less of a um, apathy. The film resonates with contemporary issues of male alienation and empathy gap. This offers a glimpse into uh, what are some of the potential consequences. One, social isolation in the film. Travis is ad adrift like many, like many of us are. He works long hours as a taxi driver from disconnected passengers and like, likes close relationships. Yeah, relationships have now been replaced with e-girls and e-thoughts. Uh, uh, similarly, modern men might find themselves isolated to one focus on work. Yes, working long hours can leave limited time for social connections. It's not just that, but it's also the digitizing of the um, of social connections. Uh, how what is happening is the women have gone online so they can meet they not only can meet more men they also feel safer because they don't actually have to meet those men in person and then now um, with uh, labeling anything that is traditionally male as being toxically male so traditionally male bonding rituals might be fading and leaving some men unsure on how to connect meaningfully. Yeah, like um, how we uh, used to play uh, tag football or even tag football when uh, them, okay? So while social media offers connections, it can also replace face-to-face -face interactions leading to feelings of loneliness. Economic pressure, Travis feels trapped in a dead-end job, unable to afford a decent life, or escape the city's grind. Yes, our rising rent, uh, sky ride, skyrocketing out of control, as long as well as mortgage and housing. Now they have a term for what's called hot bedding, or what the Filipinos call bed spacing is that you don't rent a room, you just rent the bed space to sleep, and then you go out about on your way. Okay. Uh, the fear of job loss or standard can breed frustration and feeling of worthlessness. Yes, and as well as male shaming. Of course, we have a masculinity crisis. Travis embodies a hyper-masculine ideal struggling to express emotions healthily. Well, I don't think it's a hyper-masculine ideal. This is what is a normal masculine ideal. But we like to add an adjective to make it seem like it is less, less than. This connects to modern discussions, you know, when I don't, uh, Suppressing emotions. I, I don't consider suppressing emotions to be toxic. What I consider toxic is just people that will blow up at any moment, and it's not male or female. It is just bad behavior. It is wrong no matter where it comes from. You know, it's like, ah. Uh, I'm listening to people on Fresh and Fit podcasts and the women are just cussing like a sailor. Well, guess what? Male or female, I wouldn't have those friends 
that can articulate their points without using a cuss word. Matter of fact, my, ma my male friends can articulate their points without using a cuss word. Okay? And no, there's a difference between a tough guy and a stoic man. As a matter of fact, the term guy is meant to be gender neutral. It does not refer to men. Okay, and try and look. Uh, he's a toxic man, but he's a nice guy. Okay. Using the term guy is meant to encompass everybody. Using the term man, any anytime you hear the word man, it usually uh, applies to, they usually add a negative behavior. We need to reverse it where the negative behavior is gender neutral and where the when we use man and we need to use positive such as a loving man a stoic man okay the fact is a stoic man does have emotion but he learns to direct it he takes he does the, his job first then he releases his emotions okay Stoicism as strength, the idea that men should be stoic. Okay, people have changed the definition of stoic. After all, I'm an English teacher and I can see how, how people with um, I, ideas, they manipulate the language and twist the definitions around. Okay, so the saying that men should be stoic, no, it, from seeking, seeking help for mental health issues. No, it's not the stoicism that is preventing men from seeking help for mental health issues. What it is, is a feminization of the mental health industry where men are unable to say what they need to say without forming, without getting a criticism or a defensiveness. Because the majority of the uh, psychiatrists and psychologists are female who can never understand the male existence because they have never been male. I used to see all of these uh, female news interviews. Well, is it harder for a woman? Is it harder for a woman? How can you ask a woman, is it harder for a woman if she's never been a man? Okay, so look at Nora Vincent. You know, she went to go and try and prove that men were living life on easy mode, and she found it quite the opposite. Okay? I think uh, a lot of women out there, they might be getting it, they might not. Some of them are just using it to exploit men, but I think now is the time for men to start saying, okay, uh, we've had enough. We're not gonna deal with the male shaming. We're not gonna deal with the hyper uh, toxic male behaviors. It is toxic behavior, male and female both have it. Uh, okay, now, there is no stigma around therapy. What the real stigma is, is a therapist making us feel feminine or weak. Yeah, Jeff Dunham with his, uh, uh, his doll Walter says, yeah, now I have two, when he's going to marriage counseling, he says, now I have two women that think I'm an idiot, <laughs> you know? Uh, the jokes based on the truth, okay? Open communication is encouraging men to express emotions. Well, no, we do not need to express emotions openly. 
there's a time and a place for everything. Okay, I am for proper mental health. Not this feminization, not where you open up to your wife. Okay, where she's going to turn around and use it against you. And then she's going to shame because she gets validation from other women. If her husband is uh, not living up to the perfect, uh, perfect man, okay? Matter of fact, uh, Eric Pincy described it with when, uh, when one of her uh, autographs says, well, it's how convenient for you. My wife and daughter would rather see me die on my white horse than see me stumble and fall. So by recognizing the signs of alienation and empathy, uh, I, I think there's more empathy among men, other men, especially in the men's rights movement, but we still have a long way to go. And I think now uh, we can not so much publicly on YouTube channels or anything, but at least in our circles and say, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Okay, don't forget, uh, like and subscribe. Look at the uh, link below for my Camping Sensei. Uh, so, and order a t-shirt or some camping equipment. Thank you.